On this day's love. That's right. You will stay. Amen. I want the assembly to pray for me today. Hallelujah. I got a sharp pain right in the pit of my stomach right now. Yeah, wow. And I can't shake it. It's painful, but yo, yo. I'm going forth anyway. Hallelujah. Yahweh is good. All the time. All the time. I'm thankful today for another day. Praise him for what he's done and for what he's going to do. That's right. Man. You know, I get a determination in my spirit when the enemy tries to block and stop. Hallelujah. It's some added strength that comes from somewhere. I thank Yahweh for it because I know my Redeemer lives. Oh, yeah. It is in Him I live, move, That's right. and have my existence. Amen. How many know today that Yahweh Hallelujah. is moving? That's right. In All Him you have your existence. Yeah. In Him is where strength is found. That's right. Amen. Father, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for those in attendance today. Father, I thank you for those under the sound of my voice right now. I pray in that, Father, that you would look down upon your servant and test this body out before you crown my hands and so forth. You know my situation and my circumstance. This time, this body belongs to you. Father, I pray that you would give me relief and give me strength right now, Father, to go forth this morning with your presence. Good, to you. Touch right now, Yahweh, those who are assembled yeah. today, everyone under the sound of my voice. Hallelujah. Grants these many blessings in Yahshua's precious name. We give you praise and honor forevermore. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Thank Yahweh today for all of you in attendance. Praise Yahweh for my Father. Thank you, Mother Odessa. Yes. Yeah. 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 And a trusted partner, sidekick, <laughs> Sister Mary. Hallelujah. All the way from Boston. Yeah. Yeah. All the way from the great city of Suffolk, Sister Kim in the back. Thank you. Yeah. 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 And all that are in attendance today, brothers and sisters, welcome to Yahweh's house. Thank you all today for another week, another week of victory and another week of praise. So happy to have this morning my companions seated in, in front of me. Yahweh bless Mags this week to complete successfully her eighth chemo treatment. People have been asking how how is she doing? And I said, well, you know, pictures pictures say a lot of things. It's a picture of Sister Margaret receiving her certificate of completion on Tuesday. She looked pretty happy in that picture to me. Even the lady, Tina, who became a good friend, a good nurse, was saying how amazing Margaret was to have gone. I went out of the eight times, I went seven times. And the only reason I missed one was because I was actually working on that day. But my sister-in-law, Sister Mona, filled, filled in for me. So I was there seven times with her. And not one time in the seven times that I was with him did I ever hear a complaint. Mm -hmm. They had six or seven bags hooked up to Margaret. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I learned something about that journey, and we're still on that journey. We're still traveling. 
But I learned some about that journey. I, I became very humble and respectful of what it means to be in the presence of terminal illness in the presence of those who are less fortunate. All right. There was some in there who just had flesh wrapped around their bones. There was no muscle or tissue. There was some in there who had been coming for years. There was one bag in there about this long. And it was filled with a red solution. And the bag was called the Red Devil. It is the most aggressive form of chemo that you can take. And we met a lot of people, made a lot of friends, and each time I went, it was my purpose to bring joy and happiness to somebody in there. Whether I told a word, I told a joke, or, mm -hmm. or something just to get them to smile and laugh. And I'm thankful that we had a chance to do that each time. But what I marveled so much was the strength and the confidence and the trust that Margaret displayed. I never said this to her, but I observed her and watched her each time she went. And certainly we were there to give her support and encouragement. As during my time of prostate cancer, she was there for me. And I'm thankful for the journey and I'm thankful for her mindset and for her confidence and her trust in Yahweh. Amen. Ella Green hit it today and Minister Butler hit it today. I'm going to conclude from last Sunday's piece and pass of all understanding. And a few more passages I want to share with you today. But I can't even imagine going through life not having a relationship with Yahweh. Amen. Can you imagine to be granted so many years on the earth to do whatever you want to do? Yahweh never holds a hammer over your head and forces you to serve him. But he gives an opportunity to all of us and he extends an invitation. The scripture says, many are called, but few are chosen. I've heard yes. that scripture many years, and many people have interpreted many different ways. Some, some think that some are called to the ministry, and some are chosen, and so forth and so on. And what that scripture essentially means is simply this. Yahweh extends an invitation to everybody. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, only a few don't accept it. Mm. He tells us the road that leadeth to righteousness, to eternal life, is a narrow path. It's a narrow gate. And the part that's really mind-boggling, it says only a few are going to find it. That's right. But in the midst of a culture and generations and man doing his own thing, gives us a strong indication about, about the road that leads to destruction. Hallelujah. It said it was broad and it was wide, and many went therein. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy that John did look and see a number that no man could number when he saw the number of those in heaven. Hallelujah. So I know a lot going to be in heaven, but I understand it's going to be standing in the room only yeah. in hell. No one wants to go to hell. No one is rushing to get to hell. I've never seen anybody speeding to get to hell. Yet in life we can make some very unwise decisions that put us there quickly. But today, Our daily bread gives us a good indication about our attitude and gratitude. 
Beautiful reading today. Entitled Attitude of Gratitude. In my state of the U.S., the winters can be brutal with sub-zero temperatures and never-ending snow. One bitterly cold day as I shovel snow for what seemed like the thousandth time our postman paused in his rounds to ask how I was doing. I told him that I disliked winter and was very and was weary of all the heavy snow. I then commented that his job must be pretty rough during these extreme weather conditions. He responded, Yeah, but at least I have a job. Hallelujah. A lot of people don't. I'm thankful to be working. I have to admit that I felt quite convicted by his attitude of gratitude. How easily we can lose sight of everything we have to be thankful for That's right. when the circumstances of life become unpleasant. Mm. Paul told the followers of Yahshua at Colossians, let the peace of Yahshua rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. He wrote to the Thessalonians, Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is Yahweh's will for you in Messiah Yahshua. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Yeah. Even in our times of genuine struggle and pain, we can know Yahweh's peace and permit it to rule our hearts. And in that peace, we will find reminders of all that we have been given in Yahshua. In that, we truly can be thankful. That's right. Let's give you our way of praise. Yahweh is worthy of all praise. That faith says it all. I'm truly thankful. Thank Yahweh for Madge and for her journey. She's been a blessing to this body of the Messiah. Having missed a beat. Having missed a service. Having missed a bulletin. Only miss praise and worship one time because of her throat. Well, because she wasn't feeling well, it was just a throat. And I'm looking at that commitment and that tenacity and that perseverance, that stick to it in this. Those are the attributes that warriors are made out of. All right, now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahweh don't need no punks Hallelujah. in this day and time. <laughs> he don't need no wimps. But he needs strong ambassadors, strong warriors who are ready at the drop of a head All right, man. to proclaim him in spirit and in truth. For Yahweh is a spirit, and those that seek him must worship him in what? For the hour have come. And that hour comes at any time when Yahweh speaks to your heart and speaks to your spirit and says to you, this is your hour. I'm often amazed even in service when sermons and teachings go forth how we can stay glued to our seats. When the spirit of Yahweh is moving mightily upon you, he's speaking to your heart. You know, Yahweh don't always have to speak in a deep voice. It can be a whisper. And so oftentimes he says to you, this is your hour, this is your time. That's right. This is your moment to come to me. Hallelujah. I watched 
down through the years of my ministry and over the years I've watched people glued to seats when altar calls are made. Whatever is prohibiting them from getting up to walk down and give their life to Yahweh has always been a question that I've always uttered and thought Satan does an awesome job in putting doubt and a sense of Someone being stubborn and sitting down on the voice of Yahweh. Yahweh gives all of us an opportunity right. to get it together. That's right. I'm just amazed. We come to church Sunday in and Sunday out. And one thing that I'm hoping today that you will leave with is a mindset and an understanding of how much your tank is filled up with trust and confidence in Yahweh. Hallelujah. You would be surprised how much you can gather by closing your eyes. All right. Not going to sleep, <laughs> but closing your eyes and focusing on the goodness of Yahweh. Yes, indeed. And getting yourself in a place at a point in time where there are no distractions. Hallelujah. And sometimes it's good to close your eyes and just focus. That's right. On the goodness of how good he's been to you. I'm thankful today for this peace that passes all understanding. <laughs> the fourth chapter of Philippians is one of my favorite chapters. And I want to just go back to it for a moment. We're going to start at the Fourth verse. Philippians chapter 4, starting at the fourth verse. Out of all the assemblies that Shaul ministered at and set up in Asia Minor, Philippi has to be his most favorite assembly. All right. And, he's, and he shows that in many ways, Thessalonica and Colossians, Ephesus, Galatians, and all of those assemblies certainly were near and dear to his heart. But this particular assembly has something very special going on. Hallelujah. He speaks to our hearts. And I want you to <clears throat> look at this lesson today as we read it with an open heart and an open mind. When I think of a peace that goes beyond all of our understanding, man's intellectual capabilities are limited, <laughs> to right. say the least. All right. When man thinks he's so smart. <laughs> last night, I've often asked the question, last night, I don't know how many looked up in the sky, but the moon was radiant. Yeah. It was so bright and so beautiful, I just stood in awe as I looked at it driving along. And I'm saying, what's making the moon shine like that all those many miles away? What makes the stars illuminate at night? And yet when man gets to, you would think that the moon is a huge light bulb. Amen. It's so bright that the electricity there is just off the chain. <laughs> Dominion power would love to get that source of electricity. <laughs> and yet it's so bright, it lights up the world. Hallelujah. But yet so far away. All right. Yahweh gives us a peace that transcends all understanding. And how do you get to that place? Satan's role is to keep you distracted from transcending to that 
the, that peace that Yahweh wants to give. Amen. There are times that you need to leave your space and get into Yahweh's space. That's right. And the only way to leave your space is to shut out everything out here. Hallelujah. Take a moment to reflect. Sit down. Be still and be quiet. Yes. Close your eyes and enter into Yahweh's space. All right. And start your conversation off with him. Father, you know how much I love you. I just need right now to feel your peace. That transcends, that oh, yeah. goes beyond That's even right. my interpretation, even my understanding. There is a peace and a calmness that can come to you. Yet everything around you is sinking sand. Yeah. When the earth all around me is sick and saying, where do I go? I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the rock where the, uh, that the builders rejected. That's right. I run to the mountains and the mountains do what? Stand by me. When all the earth all around me is sinking sand on Yahshua, the solid rock, I stand. How do you stand on Yahshua? You stand on Yahshua in your spirit. Yeah. There's a place that we can go that Satan desires for us to stay away from. It's a place of solitude, of calmness, right. and of peace. Hallelujah. Where confidence and trust resides like nobody's business. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look what Paul says to us in this letter to this wonderful assembly of Philippians and Philippi. Rejoice mm -hmm. in Yahweh always. All right. I will say it again. Rejoice. Yeah. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Hallelujah. Yahshua is near. Do not be anxious about anything. That's right. But in everything by prayer <coughs> and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request. To the Most High. Hallelujah. And the peace of Yahweh, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart, your hearts, and your minds yeah. in Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. How do you have your heart guarded and your mind guarded? Yahweh's peace is a shield over your mind. Don't you know that Satan's That's right. battleground is your mind? Yeah. yeah. The devil desires to distract your mind. Ever, have you ever started a prayer with Yahweh and all of a sudden the words get all tangled up, you, your mind started drifting and you forgot what you were saying, but you were, you were uttering words but the prayer didn't mean absolutely nothing. You start out first of all, verse sincere prayer. And before you know it, the prayer has drifted because there are images that now come into your head. Yeah. Anybody ever been there? Hallelujah. Images come into your head that, that, that's distracting. Something you're worried about. Mm -hmm. Something that you're trying to get a handle on. Mm -hmm. you, you sit there and pray to Yahweh. You ask Yahweh to take care of the situation. All right. Then the enemy comes in. Why are you praying? Mm -hmm. See, Satan is very rude. Mm -hmm. He don't care about your prayer. Matter of fact, he hates the fact that when you decide to pray. I love it so much all the, the oftentimes that when I pray, I don't even move my lips. Hallelujah. We can pray in our spirit, can't we? Oh, yeah. We can pray with our eyes closed. And we can we can ask Yahweh to come and give us strength. Yahweh said, I need you. I, I need you, Yah. I need you, Yah. How, how often do I need you? I need you right now. Yeah. You know, when you think about your walk with Yahweh, here's what he says here. Do not be anxious about anything. That's right. But in everything by prayer and petition. With Thanksgiving present, present your request to Yahweh. Hallelujah. And the peace of Yahweh which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Yahshua the Messiah. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, Hallelujah. whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. 
If anything is excellent of praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, Paul says, yeah. put it into practice. And the and the most high of peace will be with you. When you think about learning to be content in whatever state that you're in, how did Paul gravitate to this mindset? Yahweh, my body's wrapped in pain. All right. Mm -hmm. Yahweh, they say I got a terminal of illness. Hallelujah. Doctors don't give me too long to live. And I love the fact that Yahweh says, I am the doctor. That's right. Beyond all doctors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm the lawyer beyond all lawyers. Hallelujah. I can keep you in perfect peace. That's right. If you're what? Uh -huh. If your mind is stayed on me. Oh, yeah. And see, here's what our, our goal in life is. Mm -hmm. We wrestle every day against this mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Against these thoughts. Mm -hmm. Sailor puts us in checkmate every day. Yes. He don't care how many scriptures you know. He don't care how many tongues you speak in. All right. He don't care how often you shout. Yeah. This battle that you are in is always going to be waging war on you. Hallelujah. The devil is seeking to take you out. All right. Paul put it this way. I modify this body, this fleshly body, every day and put it to death. Yeah. I got to put these thoughts to death. That's right. That peace that transcends all understanding yeah. is a place where Yahweh desires for us to always be. Oh, that's right. But it's not always that easy. Hallelujah. I want to share with you some passages from <coughs> the Old Covenant. In the book of Psalms 18 and 19, he brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Yeah. Proverbs 18, 21 tells us, death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's right. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Hallelujah. I was reminded that in the grave there is no praise. All right. It's why now it's important that every opportunity we get, we give y'all we praise. Hallelujah. We praise them in the good times as well as the bad times. Even in my bad circumstances, Yahweh, I'm still going to praise you because what I've learned, even in my pain, there's victory in my pain. There's joy when I'm going through sickness because when I think about my sickness and my pain, the next thing I know is that Yahweh said, wait a minute, your body don't have to endure all this sickness and this pain. All you have to do is focus right now on me. Yeah. Close your eyes and get into and come into my space. Satan don't want you in that space. Nope. Satan don't want you to reflect and to meditate on Yahweh's word. Here's right. why the word is so important to be in you. There are times in devastating moments when you know what you can't run to the telephone, you can't run to the scriptures. You need to be you need to be able to activate that word quickly. The scripture tells us in, in, in Philippians, I think it's 4.13, I can do what? Oh, All right. Yeah. Through who? Yeah. Through Yahshua the Messiah who does what? Yeah. My strength is in Yahshua HaMashiach. Now, when I think about I can do all things, why do I get so discombobulated and mixed up and run them up when body's going through pain? Yeah. Now, even as I come on the floor right now, yeah. That sharp pain in my stomach is, is beginning to, to, to dissolve and go away. Hallelujah. Because now I, I'm in Yahweh's face. Yes. And I understand that my strength right now is not in me, Hallelujah. but my strength is in Yahweh. My Hallelujah. trust Hallelujah. and my confidence is in Yahweh. Yes. And the more I talk about it, the more the pain begins to go away. Hallelujah. I'm a living witness right now as I stand before you. When I got up, the pain was sharp. But as I'm saying right now, that the confidence in Yahweh has to be so strong, there's a space that you got to get to. And you got to fight to get to that space sometimes. All right. You got to let the enemy know that in spite of what I'm going through, my circumstances, what I may be dealing with right now, Yahweh still reigns supreme. Yahweh's omnipotent. 
got his own life. There's nothing he can't do. There's no impossibility for who Yahweh is. You got to tell yourself, I rebuke that pain. I send that pain back from whence it came because first of all, there's a peace that transcends all understanding. I don't understand why the pain is being in life, but I know right now I'm in his space. When I get in his space, there's a peace that passes all understanding. How does Paul tell us? If you're going to think about things, if you're going to put your mind on things, here's what he tells us to do. See, Salem wants you to keep that man of yours in the gut. He wants those thoughts to be on things that take you away from the space. That's right. So you can't go to Yahweh's space with God. Yeah. You got to come there with a pure mind. You got to come there with pure thoughts. Hallelujah. Here's what's happening. Look, so oftentimes we wonder what stops our blessings. Yeah. We wonder sometimes what prohibits Yahweh from doing what he needs to do in our life. Look what Paul tells us here. Here's an indicator here that we really need to look at, certainly, with a lot of understanding. Finally, brothers, in verse 8, whatever is true, yeah. whatever is noble, That's right. whatever is right, you know, it's not right. It's not right to talk about one another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not right. All right. And see, I learned a long time ago, Yahweh don't like ugly. Hallelujah. And he will deal with you. Yes. Yeah. He'll sit back and he'll, he'll be very quiet. He won't say anything. Hallelujah. I'm amazed. I'm amazed at church. <clears throat> I've seen church folk. I've seen church folk. Wonder sometimes why blessings are not being asked. All right. Prayers are not being answered. <laughs> Oftentimes, I don't understand why I'm going through what I'm going through. Yeah. There's a reason for all the madness that we experience in our personal world. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. And I can tell you, Yahweh don't like ugly. Hallelujah. All right. You don't like ugly. Whatever things are right, these are the things you think of. Is it right? Talk about one another. Hallelujah. Is it right to gossip about one another? Come on now. It ain't right. <clears throat> and to let you know it ain't right, Yahweh has ways of showing you it ain't. Oh, yes. All right. But look about Yahweh, he can whoop us like nobody can whoop us. Hallelujah. The scripture says, whom Yahweh loves, he does what? Yes. And he can shut Get that. Yeah. So you either gonna come clean with Yahweh or you're gonna stay away good. Yeah. There is no there is no halfway with him. There is no gray area with Yahweh. Paul made it real clear here. If you're gonna think on some things, here's what he says. Look at it. Oh yeah. Here's what he says. You want this peace that transcends all understanding before you get it. This is the mindset you got to have. Look at what he says. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. That word admirable is beautiful there. Because it's an admirable thing. All right. It's an admirable, here's, here's what an admirable thing. Somebody want to come to you and gossip about a brother and sister. Here's the admirable thing. He says, bro, I really don't want to hear it. But can we pray? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. <coughs> can we pray? <coughs> Gotta shut it down quick. Hallelujah. Yeah. Shut it down quick, can we pray? And guess who's sitting back folding their arms looking down there? All right now. Oh, yeah. Yahweh himself. Hallelujah. Let's shut it down. <coughs> Help y'all. Clarify y'all. 
You want to get to know him? You want to get to real, you want to get to know the real Yahweh? Paul just told you. Hallelujah. No. Love him. Right. Pure. Think on him. These things. Yeah. If I think of those things, I ain't got time to think of nothing else. That's right. And look at the pain and the hurt. Look at the pain and the hurt. And all the assemblies experienced this. All the assemblies experienced this. See, see, there ain't nothing new under the sun. All right. Folk been talking about brothers and sisters in church since the time of Paul. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <clears throat> and he addressed it. Didn't he? It didn't stop in Philippi. Look at Corinth. My goodness. Mm. There was no assembly like Corinth. Corinth was so bad that you had incest going on in the church. Come on, All right. Mm. Daddy sleeping with the daughters. Mama sleeping with the sons. <coughs> Grandfather sleeping with the grandkids. Paul dealt with all that mess. Mm -hmm. Right there in Corinth. And then you think about culture and where we're going right now. All right. The buzzword is climate change. <clears throat> we see things that we can't explain. Hallelujah. In months that we've seen on the number of years we've been on the earth. Oh, yeah. We've never seen temperatures in these summer like we've seen them. <laughs> we can't even explain it. <clears throat> even the fish confused. Say <clears throat> so the water's supposed to be cold. <clears throat> Freezing. <clears throat> the bear, he's trying to have it. <clears throat> he don't know if to go to sleep or go to the beach. All right, now. <laughs> He's trying to figure out if he can see. You got temperatures over in places like Antarctica, mm -hmm. where big glaciers of ice are melting by the days, <clears throat> water upon water. And the earth is more water than its land. That's right. <laughs> if you think so, you don't think so, go, 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 go look at Google, Google Earth. And see how much blue you see com com compared to the name. Mm. And those of us who've had the opportunity to serve in the Navy, as Mr. Belton, and Mr. Belton served 20 some years in the Navy. He was on the ship, big portion of his life. I imagine he would tell us right now if he had to, there were many days he was on that big ship. And as far as his eyes could see, Number one, All right. land nowhere. And if you think that's amazing, all you got to do is get in your car and leave the cemetery, right up to the Hampton Bridge. <laughs> Pull right over and just look. <laughs> all you going to see is water. All right. And you think about a body work. And what I find, what I find amazing, the older we get, here's life, sort of in a nutshell. The older we get, the more we think about death. All right, that's right there. The more we think about death. Hallelujah. But here's the good news. Here's the good news. If you spent a large portion of your life and your time giving Yahweh service, being in his services, now I said you were perfect. Ain't nobody in here perfect from the poor bit to the back door. We're all the sinners. Saved by Yahweh's unmarried faith. Hallelujah. So there ain't nobody in here that can poke your chest out and get the head up. Not so. From the preacher to the back door. Amen. And I'd be the first to, 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 to hold up both hands and both feet. Hallelujah. 
Because Jesse Allen is unmerited favor. Yes. That he allowed me to come into his ark of safety. Amen. Fill me with his spirit and save me. Yes. And I still got a long way to go. I don't know about you, but I'm like Paul. Hallelujah. I'm, I still got a long way to go. Thank Every you. day, but there's one thing that I do know All right. that I'm happy about is my relationship. Amen. I can call on him and I can feel his presence, sure. Hallelujah. Even in my difficult times of Eureka. Yes. Painful moments. Oh, yeah. When nobody's voice, nobody's prayers can do anything, there's a place that I can go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tested it too many times. All right. And he's proven himself, oh. He showed himself. Yes. He said, be still and know that I'm God. You want the peace, the calmness, the pass of others. And see, first of all, you can't talk this Yahweh stuff. You got to walk it. All right. How do you put your trust and confidence in Yahweh? Don't tell me Yahweh is a healer and come out your mouth and then you can't walk the healing part. Hallelujah. My leg don't feel right. My shoulder don't feel right. Okay. Who made the shoulder? Who made the leg? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this leg belongs to you. This shoulder belongs to you. Hallelujah. I'm going to believe you right now for my healing. Hallelujah. And sit back and watch him do something to that shoulder. Oh, yeah. And to say, I, I need a witness right now. Come on. Yes. Oh, yeah. I need a witness right now. Oh, yeah. How many of you know Yahweh is a healer? Amen. Oh, yeah. How many of you know he's a healer? Oh, yeah. If you know he's a healer, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know him to be a healer. You know to be a way maker. Yes. There's a peace that transcends all understanding. If yes. I'm going to do some thinking now, I'm going to change my thinking the day before I leave yes. this assembly. Come on. If I'm one who's been one of those gossipers, I need to change my mindset. Come on. Right. Because I could be holding up my own personal blessings. Yes. Doing yes. this mess that the enemy is having in me. Just saying I love to sit down. Same conversation with Lovely. All right. What about pure? If you got lustful desire thoughts, they can be in the same conversation with pure. Hallelujah. Right? I don't have to stand up here and tell you what's right and what's wrong. Oh, yeah. Y'all grown. You grown. If you got time this week to talk about that man over there, mm -hmm. you got a problem. Yes. Come on, Lee. Yes, Not because he's the bishop, he, he's your senior pastor. Mm -hmm. He's also your brother in the faith. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, Amen. he's also Amen. your brother in the faith. Amen. 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 Your sister right here. Mm -hmm. If you got time to sit and talk about Sister Margaret, then you are sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Use a sorry case for a believer. 
If your conversation is about Sister Eureka Belcher, you got a problem. Come on. Come on. All right. What about Mother Whitbury? You got time to talk about her? Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. All right. Not because she's my mother. But look at the warrior. Look at the look at the years of service. That's mm right. -hmm. Those of you who've been here, mm -hmm. you watched her down through the years. Mm -hmm. God, we sustained her to be here 91 years. Oh yeah. And I sit, I sit back in admiration every Sunday I get a chance to be here. Amen. Hallelujah. Because that's a beacon. Yes. That's an example. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yahweh will not forget your what? If you've shown toward his believers and toward his name. That's right. Boy, if, if, if that prerequisite don't fit her shame, I don't know what does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it, sir. Not in the right mind now. Mm -hmm. I look at my papa. I talk to him every day. Mm -hmm. Talks about mom. What he's going through. He's not complaining. He's just saying what, he, what he's going through. If he's faithful, mm -hmm. he's hanging in there with him. Yes, he is. Amen. Down to the end. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yahweh does the same thing with us. All right. Satan wants us to stay off course. See, look. If I'm in a boxing ring with an opponent, and I know he got a weakness. See, because as long as you, as long as you allow Yahshua the Messiah to fight your battle, no weapon formed against you is going to work. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty. Hallelujah. To the pulling down of what? Strongholds. And what are strongholds? Strongholds come right with you on Sunday morning in the church. Yes. They come right in the center of the church. Sunday morning, right there. Stronghold, right there, right beside. The Thank you. And look, and how do you know the stronghold at church? Here's a good indicator. You're finding your thoughts drifting. Mm. You're finding your mind drifting. All right. Your mind on the sermon. Mm -hmm. First thing you hear, mm -hmm. she thinks she's something. Look at her. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is that her hair? <laughs> Stupidness. Stupidness. <laughs> mm. I was seeing that dress before. Don't she have more than one pair of shoes? <laughs> this is the same mess. This is the same mess Paul's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to think those things. You want some peace that passive all understand? Yahshua Messiah says, I give you peace, not of this world. Yeah. yeah. How do you give Yahshua's peace? And, and, if I would, and I would ask the question, when was the last time you felt Yahshua's peace? Hallelujah. The world has a temporary peace. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you why it don't last. Mm -hmm. Why is it? <clears throat> why is it we think money is the answer to everything? Come on. Why do we think, man, if I was rich, I wouldn't have to worry about nothing? <laughs> so to see. Watch this. Watch this. Somebody asked how to use one time. How much money does a man need? <laughs> what do you say? Just a little bit more. And last time I heard when Howard Hughes died, see, he didn't read, he didn't learn anything either. <laughs> he was a multi billionaire when he died. And look, look at poor brother Epstein, who just took his life. <laughs> he bought a couple of hours. Yeah. Are they still there? Somebody got us. Those pretty cars, are they still there? <laughs> them pretty homes and the mansions, are they still there? <laughs> now, I don't know if your brother had a personal relationship with Yahweh. All right. Here's how Job kind of put it. And I don't think Epstein was as rich as Job. <laughs> Job said, naked, naked I came. Oh, yeah. 
and naked, I'm going to what? Return. Now, only thing that's important when the casket rolls up here, whether it's here, at the north of Scope, I don't care where they, where they roll you in. Hallelujah. When the casket roll up here and they open it up for you to view for the last time, yeah. the only thing that's important, Chuck, did that person know Yah? Mm -hmm. Did that individual have a personal relationship with Yah on the side? And did that individual give their life? Mm -hmm. So yes, all right. Because I found out. I remember preaching my father-in-law's eulogy right here in this church. Mm -hmm. I remember, I remember the sermon like it was yesterday on the scripture that I used. Because Mr. Henson was a Navy man. He served on the Iowa, the Missouri, and the Wisconsin. All three battleships. And I remember all the stories he used to always tell me about his days in the Navy. And there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about there is no discharge from that war. All right. The one called death. Hallelujah. Because when the death angel come, I don't care how many songs we've sung, surely. I don't care how many music, how much music we play. I don't care how many sermons we preach. If your mark and your election show has not been met and you didn't know y'all should have sat, you got a problem. Mm -hmm. The scripture says there is no praise from the grave. Mm -hmm. <coughs> there is no praise from the grave. All right. You won't be praising them in the grave. Mm -hmm. You're waiting on your appointed time. Mm -hmm. And here's the most important thing about church. Here's the most important thing about church. We come to church year after year, year after year, year after year, year after year. We can nod ahead and approve it with the preacher. Here's the most important thing in church. Here's the reality right here. And you know, all of us have a chance to go to funerals. But one day they're going to come and ask. Yeah. All right. Come and ask. They're going to open up the lid. Then we know. The question is, we're going to spend eternity. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it, isn't it amazing that at the end of life, people's attitude changes quickly when they realize that life is about to leave their body? All right. Mm -hmm. Your money don't mean nothing. Mm -hmm. Your worldly possessions don't mean nothing. Because in just a few seconds, <laughs> Look. Go. 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 I had the opportunity and privilege. I don't know how many people have ever had the opportunity to watch somebody pass away. I had the opportunity and privilege to be in a hospital, hospital bed with a very, very dear friend mother whose son has been here, Brother Thomas Telefair. Let me give some of you remember to him. I was at Norfolk General when Miss Anna Telefair took her last breath. I remember holding her hand, holding her hand, and she looked at me and she told me, she said, Elmo, thank you. That was the last thing she said to me. I stepped back and I was going to let the family have their time with their mom. They said, no, I'm going to stay. Hallelujah. And you're part of this family. On the telephone, our son was born. He didn't come back up. And then there was a in the room that you can't, that you can't shoot. And I think about 85 when I had him on. And whatever was on top of me, Shirley, I could not lift myself on that day. It came in place. 
placed itself, laid itself right on top of me. And it started from my feet, just like ice cubes coming right up my legs. Yeah. But it got up here to my chest area. Oh, I started breath getting short trying to breathe. And I couldn't breathe. And all I remember saying, Yahweh, I tried to do my best. I remember seeing these huge hands of light come straight down through my cousin's ceiling in her bedroom, straight down. And when that breath was about to go up my body, these hands like it snatched it just that quickly. There was a peace that passed for all understanding. Amen. Amen. I could breathe. Amen. I could breathe. I was relaxed. I was calm. There was a whew, There was a peace that transcended all understanding. There was a confidence because my confidence was already in Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Already in his name. Yeah. Knowing what I tried to do with his name. And I think about it now. That's why I get electrified when I think about Yahweh's name. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Do you know how do you know how special all of you are to know his name mm -hmm. and to have it here instead of here? Oh yeah. Yes. That word have I hear where? Not in my mouth. Not in my mind. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not do what? Sin. And you don't want to sin against it. Oh, yeah. If I've learned anything today, if I'm one of those individuals that's not been thinking about those things in the scripture that I heard today about, where my, where my true peace is going to come, I'm going to start doing some cleaning up. Oh, yeah. I'm going to shut my mouth when it comes to talking about my brother and sister. Yes. I'm gonna change that way. Oh yeah. I'm gonna start thinking on things that are more pure. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I'm gonna start thinking on things that Yahweh gets edification in. Oh yeah. So when my time comes for when this enemy comes in to attack me, and he's coming, he's coming today at some of us. Come on. Just by this sermon, he's coming at me. Let me tell you something right now. <laughs> my pain is gone. It's gone. Nothing. I don't feel a thing, sure. I don't feel a thing. For the last 40 some minutes, I've been up here proclaiming Him, Yahweh. Hallelujah. And because of that faith in this hope, the pain is gone. May Yahweh bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Let's give Yahweh a praise. May the service in the hands of Bishop. Let's receive him with a hearty hallelujah. hallelujah. With a hearty hallelujah. hallelujah. Yahweh bless you. Hallelujah. The works I've done speak for me. Oh, okay. Hey, man. 
I say 